nipa uhai na uridhi ni sabike sehemu yako kanifanya mimi ukanitenga mimi baba sehemu yako kanifanya mimi ukanitenga mimi baba Hey, shalom, shalom, karibu sana, karibu sana, you are blessed. You are blessed. Let me give you a few minutes, even as you join in. Invite your friends, invite family, invite people. Uh, share this on your Facebook pages. Um, share this on your stories. Let people watch this. Uh, my name is uh, Joseph Omondi. I'm excited to bring you the word. This is the Awakening Church. And uh, we are super excited to bring you into the meal that we share um, and we eat of every day. We love Jesus. We are passionate about seeing believers uh, being equipped to manifest the fullness of God. So, um, Karibu Sana, I am super excited. I, I want to take you on a journey of, um, of a certain discovery that is within you. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, um, I'll read from verse 45. The Bible says, And so it is written, Makra toshkala pratoshkare mandaza. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. The first Adam was made a living soul. The second Adam, a quickening a spirit. Jeta libratos kare mandaya. Verse 46 says, How be it uh, that was not fast, which is spiritual? 
but that which is natural and afterwards that which is spiritual verses 47 the first man is of the earth earthy the second man is the lord from heaven the first man is of the earth earthy the second man is the lord from heaven talking about jesus christ now believer I want to invite you to a life that God has freely given to you. I want you to know that number one, there's two kinds of life here. The number one life is the created life. The second life is God himself made manifest. Remember, we are told that Jesus Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. In other words, if you want to see God, you see Jesus. And Jesus in him, in himself, the Bible says that it pleased God that the fullness of God would dwell in him. In other words, you see Jesus, you see the fullness of God. I want you to know that, that there is the created life and there is the life that is not created. And that is the life of God. And the Bible says that the first Adam was of the earth Arthi, the first Adam was a living soul. In other words, God breathed in him, but he was still a living soul. But the second Adam was a quickening spirit, a life-giving spirit. In other words, if you have come in contact with the second Adam, then you have a life that is not created. You have a life that is not created. You have a life that is God himself pouring himself to fit in your frame. Amen. It's the mystery of salvation. It's the mystery of salvation. It's the mystery of salvation. That hey, you are not just born again. It's not just that your spirit is quickened. No, the whole of you. You have a life. You have been quickened because you came in contact with the life-giving Christ. With the quickening spirit. Mm. It's not just your soul that is saved. Your flesh is saved too. Now, I know this is not a common gospel, or rather it's not a, a gospel that we, we embrace because we know that our flesh struggles. We know that all these things, listen, the Bible says, listen to this, the Bible says that that which is, is, is feeble is overtaken by that which is superior. Now, I've paraphrased that. The Bible says that which is mortal is overtaken by that which has seen immortality that which has tasted immortality in other words if your flesh is weak that which is coming upon your flesh is stronger is quickened okay the bible says in the book of romans romans chapter number eight allow me to open romans chapter number eight ratosh keleman dizala bratosh keleman dirada dedes kelipa toroto pashka thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Romans. Romans chapter number 8. I'll read from verses uh, 11. Romans 8. I'll read from verse 11. The Bible says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you he that raised up christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies so i'm talking about the second adam is a quickening spirit what is he quickening your mortal body we were talking a few days um, a few sundays ago at the awakening church we were talking about immortality as we have been doing in a couple of months now and we were talking about immortality and we were seeing that this spirit came not to quicken your spirit because your born again human spirit has already received life the one thing that this spirit comes to quicken is your mortal body what is mortal that which gets sick that which gets feeble that which can die your mortal your physical body do you know that once you're born again whether you believe in immortality or not if you go or you you can lose your body you can lose your body especially if you don't believe in immortality but you can lose this body but you have not lost your spirit why because your spirit was quickened your, 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 your spirit received a regeneration your spirit has been regenerated in other words your dwelling is the abode of god you, you know you and god you and christ you have been made one but i'm here to let you know that hey the same spirit that raised christ from the dead 
that same spirit can quicken your mortal bodies. This is your, your, mot- your flesh is your mortal body. It can quicken your mortal body. So the first Adam was of the earth earthy. And in the first Adam, there is death. In the first Adam, there is curses. In the first Adam, the, the, you, you fall short. In the first Adam, you need certain revelations for you to be able to even see God or to move with God. In the first Adam, you need sacrifices. You need to give constantly. But the second Adam is a quickening spirit. In other words, nothing can die in the presence of the second Adam. So the Bible says the first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, verse 48 says, as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Which means that you can be cut off from the Adamic nature. It is the desire of God, it is the will of God, it is the plan of God that you are cut off. Mm. That you are cut off from the Adamic nature. Mm. The Bible says, as it is with the first Adam, as it is with the Adam that is from the earth. Okay, so that means that you struggle before you can put food on the table. Mm. Ah. Because the first Adam carried with him curses. At some point. The first Adam was an Adam that fell short of the glory of God. In other words, he was not at the place where he would function the way God wanted him. Remember, God had designed that he would walk together with him and achieve the perfection. You know, most people think when the first Adam was created, he had a perfection. Now, I know, I know he did not need the revelation to name the animals. I know that he would walk with God, but still there was a perfection that he did not have. Why? Because that perfection is only found in Christ Jesus. The fullness of God is in Christ Jesus. Now, he would only just fellowship. With God, and that's why God left, would leave and come back later. But for you, God has designed it in such a way that He makes His abode in you. Mm. Oh, ho, 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 ho. The ark of the covenant is you. <laughs> the ark of the covenant is you. Ratos kelema, dizala, bratos kelema, zutare, patish kelepa. Believer, if you hear what I am telling you, you will also realize that, that we are the carriers. Of the glory of God. Amen. We are the carriers. The first Adam carried death. The first Adam carried shortcomings. His children fought each other. There was no peace. But even though death was written somewhere, you know, he, 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 he would die. He could now die. Because that's a curse that came. The Bible says that you can be liberated. And you can choose the kind of life that you want. Now, I hear people say, you know, nowadays you have to struggle before ABCD happens. I hear people say, you know, you cannot just, you know, you must be, you know, there's someone who believes that you can live in houses that you do not build because it is scripture. Mm. And there's someone who cannot allow themselves to believe the same way because they believe you must work hard. Mm. In other words, the kind of teaching that you subject yourself to, that will you live. Mm. The Bible says, so as it was with the earthy, such are they also. As it was with the first Adam, such are they also who have taken on to that nature or who have refused to graduate from that nature. Mm. But the Bible says, as it is with the new, with the new, with the second Adam, Mm. so is it with everyone who embraces this revelation. So is it with everyone who embraces this truth. There is a truth that would liberate you. There is a truth that would set you free. And that is this. The second Adam came to make your life better. He is a rejuvenating. He is a quickening spirit. So your body is quickened. You are better than the first Adam. The first Adam was given a a location on the earth, which was the Garden of Eden. Even though God would come and visit it, it was still a location in the earth that he was given. Do you hear what I'm saying? He was given the whole earth to take care of it, but still it was here. But you see, for you, you are now seated with him in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. 
Ah, repa toshkala mandiza libra kato pasikeri mandaza. Eden is no longer a location. The idea of Eden is no longer a location for you. Who ratosh kele mandaza? Was it yesterday we were having a conversation? Was it with 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 Afisa? Uh, we were having a conversation. I think yeah, it must be Afisa. We were having a conversation and talking about rapture. And some people are waiting for rapture. <laughs> but the word rapture means caught up. If truly you are quickened by the spirit, caught up is your everyday life. Amen. I will not be surprised when we are caught up. Because it will just be one of those days when we are caught up. After many caught ups that we are caught up and this time we are not coming back again. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? A mature believer should exit or die. <laughs> At will. <laughs> Any death that you die without a revelation or you just give up even if angels came to you is a premature death. <laughs> the first Adam is a quickening spirit. A quickening spirit. May you be quickened now. Amen. If you're sick in your body, may you be quickened now. Amen. If you need an encounter, may you be quickened now. Amen. If there's been limitations in your life, I prophesy of your life, let there be a quickening. I prophesy over your life right now. Let there be a quickening in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let there be a quickening in the name of Jesus. Ooh, karamanda. You can never go beyond the revelation that you carry. Amen. You can never. Ooh, shatarada bosh kalamanda. Verse 49, the Bible says, And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Mm. Ooh. That is why your mortal body is being quickened, that you may resemble the heavenly body. Shataya marakata. Skala bratosh kalemandaya. I've always said this, and allow me to repeat it again here. You are not even a model. You are not a type. Mm. You are the original deal. Amen. God is in you. He poured himself in you. You are not a type. Christ is inside of you. We are the body of Christ. We are one with Christ. The life that is in Christ is the life that is in you. Having said that, having said that, Jata Lebratos Kalema Dirada, allow me to say this. The Christ that you resemble is the resurrected Christ. Is the one who has accomplished his work Amen. on the earth. Amen. The one who went up with his body. The one who, the one who, who had a modified body. Amen. Let me call it that for lack of a better word. Amen. That is what when your body is quickened should look like. Yeah. Who? Mande zibrata. A, a lot of believers are, are living and walking and working in the old covenant without knowing. And the old covenant does not end with Malachi. Oh, rapata shkala manda. Even John the Baptist was walking in it. Ah, even the disciples at some point, they were walking in it, even after Jesus came. Oh, how do you think Ananias died? Because <laughs> the revelation had not yet hit. And that's why when Paul comes, he, he, even Peter is like, man, this, this guy is preaching some tough things. Yeah. Ooh, because the revelation is progressive. Mm. Revelation is progressive. Today I was having a discussion with someone and I was telling them, we were talking about revelation. And I was giving them a, an analogy. And this was the analogy. You see, when we were young and when you're still a, a baby, you're still a baby and you're playing, you want to play with fire. Your mother would, if your mother is like mine, they would, you know, hit you up and, and tell you to stop. Um, and, and, and you'd stop, but you'd be thinking, they don't want me to have fun. At that moment, you just want, you, you cannot wait. So you're just looking at them. If they, they zuba kidogo or their eyes are just taken off you from kidogo, they find you at the fire. And so you grow up. When you are two years or three years or one year maybe, you touch the fire and it burns you and now you know that that thing burns people. At that moment, that is your revelation. See, you have grown from just knowing they don't want you to have fun. Now you are at the place of knowing that by the way this thing, I, I will, you know, it will burn me. 
Then you grow up and you're at the age, a youth group now, you're going out for camps. And, and it's cold out there and you light up bonfire and now you have a different revelation of the fire that it keeps you warm. All these are levels of revelation. Ha. The Bible says it pleases God who desires that all men be saved. Salvation is not just being saved from sin. It is also being saved from everything that sin comes with. That is sickness, that is death, that is stagnation, uh, that is curses. Yeah. From today, in the name of Jesus, we deliver you from every curse Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's coming a tribe that is rising up, Amen. a tribe that is going to embrace Amen. this non-created life. Amen. Oh, Rapota, Shkala, Manda. A, 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 a tribe that will graduate from their Adamic essence. That, that you graduate from your Adamic nature. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I want to read a scripture here. I want to read a scripture here. Galatians. Galatians chapter 1. Now this scripture, I've read it so many times and passed it because it doesn't look like it has much. Galatians. The Bible says, uh, chapter 1 verses 15. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. He separated me from my mother's womb. Now, I used to read it and just think that, you know what? From the time this baby was born, he was separated. But this is not what the Bible is talking about. Remember, there are different levels of calling. Jeremiah talks about a different thing. Before you were born, while you are still in your mother's womb, I knew you. So the separation should have started from there. What is he talking about? That separation from your Adamic nature. Who? Yeah. Kala brata. He says to reveal his son. In me, that I might preach him among the heathens, immediately conferred, not with flesh and blood. Neither did I go up after that calling to, you know, to get in. He's talking about his calling and he's saying, you know, I did not go to get other people's opinion. But I was separated from my mother's womb. Mm -hmm. Colossians, first Col uh, uh, Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, I'll also read verses 15. The Bible says that Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Allow me to, to let you know that you are the image of God. Amen. <laughs> you are the image of the invisible God because you take after Christ. You take after Christ. You take after Christ. The Bible tells us that he who is joined with Christ is one with him. So you saints are the visible image of God. You are the visible image of God. You are the visible image of God. Image of God. Image of God. God downloads himself in your structure. Ooh. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. And this will be uh, probably our last scripture. I've said probably because I might be excited. And read another scripture and I don't want to lie to you. Uh, Galatians chapter 5 verses 25. Um, hmm. ah, the Bible says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Mm. 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 Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. But if we live by the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Your position in the Spirit, in living in the Spirit, that's done. It's the Spirit of God that regenerated you. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. So you live in the Spirit. Now what's remaining is walk in the Spirit. What is that? Is to manifest His nature. Is to manifest is quickened nature, is quickening nature. That means that you're not just quickened, you are a quickening being. Mm. Wow. That you quicken. Mm. Mm. You quicken. Amen. You are a quickening being. Amen. So wherever you go, you bring forth light because you are a quickening being. Ah, whatever you do, you bring forth life because you are a quickening being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. So nothing can die around you. Amen. No one will die around you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, everything you touch may it receive quickening. Are quickening right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
ha rapota shkalema ndizala the image of christ defines you Amen. the image of jesus christ defines you Amen. you are blessed Amen. it's a beautiful day i hope you are sharing share this video share this video let them start watching it even from the start Amen. you are blessed 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 Amen. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. Amen. Amen. And allow me to pray for you. Amen. If you don't know Jesus, I want to lead you to Jesus right now. I want to lead you to Jesus. Or you were born again and you just don't know. Your life has not just been. I'm not calling you to be born again again because you're already born again. I'm calling you to have the faith of knowing that you gave your life to Jesus. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. And if you are backslidden in the definition of that word, true definition of that word, then I'm calling you back. I'm calling you back. It's a simple prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. I give my life to you. You are the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Imagine you've just confessed him as Lord over your life. Amen. I want to pray for those that are sick right now, those that need breakthroughs. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over those that are sick right now. I declare healing. I declare strength, stability in the name of Jesus. May you rise up from that bed. May you wake up, stand up from that wheelchair in the name of Jesus. Oh, Rabotash, Kalamandaza, for adventure you're watching me and you have someone dead next to you. I declare healing right now. Life. Receive life. Receive the breath of God. Receive the breath of God right now. Ha, receive the breath of God. We call back your soul in Jesus' name. Your spirit in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. I pray right now over everyone that is facing difficulties of any kind. I declare breakthroughs right now. Let there be a visitation in Jesus' name. Amen. Karibu sana, you are blessed. Celebrate grace.